evening on Nationwide, the village of Dunhill in County Waterford and the many projects which are helping this rural community to thrive. We visit some of the small businesses in the Eco Park and also its education project. We stroll along the Anne Valley Walkway, which is maintained by volunteers, and we examine the amazing topography of the Copper Coast. You're welcome to Nationwide and this evening we're coming to you from the tiny village of Dunhill on Waterford's Copper Coast. Now the population is just 250 people or thereabouts but you know there really is an awful lot going on here. Together with the neighbouring villages of Fenner, Boatstrand and Anstan, they have a motto which is absolutely inspirational. The idea is to develop our community culturally, economically and socially by harnessing the talents of the people and the resources that are available. Has the community managed to develop and grow here in this rural location? I'm meeting Senan Cook in the Dunhill Eco Park. First of all, Senan, I love your motto, the ethos, if you like, of this whole development project. What is it? Yeah, there's no limit to what can be achieved by a community working together. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it's about, isn't that's it? That's really, really what it's about, yeah, and that's why the whole thing was set up in the first place. Mm -hmm. And what was the story of it being set up? Well, it was set up in uh, 1993. Uh, following the 80s, the recession of the 80s, when the population was stagnating. Also, when we lost two teachers, one in each school at the same time, uh, the leader partnership companies were set up, as was the County Enterprise Board, and also the Community Employment Scheme. Mm -hmm. you know, and and, and when, that, when they came up, we decided that we'd form a small committee and we'd look into what we had in our own community mm -hmm. and try, do, best, do the best we could with it mm -hmm. to create jobs and to provide education, second chance education for, you know, for people as well. And that's exactly what you've done. Now we're here in the yeah. Dunhill Eco Park. I've got to ask you, why is it called Eco Park? It's called Eco Park. It's 11 and a half acres and two and a half acres of the Eco Park is, a, is an integrated constructed wetlands which deals with the waste from the buildings uh -huh. and also from the waste from the GA Club across the road. So we are very proud of that. And there's a lot going on here, isn't there? There's a huge amount going on here. We have uh, 32 small enterprises mm -hmm. and we also have an education centre and we also have 70 jobs here in this location. That's amazing, isn't yeah. it? It's not just about Dunhill on its own because the neighbouring villages are involved as well. What's is, happening yeah. in the other places? Yeah, well, when we set up in 1993, we, 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 we called ourselves the DFBA Community Enterprises Limited, and the D was Dunhill, the mm -hmm. F was Fenner, the B was Boatstrand, a fishing village, and uh, the A was Anstow. We uh, promoted an integrated approach to rural regeneration, and the four communities work very well together, and there's wonderful work going on in the four communities. You've written a book, Senan, documenting all of the development that's yes. happened here. And I suppose it really is, it's a bit of a template, isn't it, for it, other communities around the country? I believe it's a, it's a roadmap and it's been stated as being a roadmap for other communities around the country. And it's only insofar as what I learned and from, from working here in Dunhill with some wonderful people, some really great leaders you know, in, the, in the parish and also from going around the country, visiting communities around the country and the wonderful work that's been done in rural communities mm -hmm. all over the country. Yeah. And I, I just couldn't be, uh, I couldn't say that highly enough. Like, it sounds as if you've got great vision here mm -hmm. and great people. We have wonderful people, that's the key. They, they, without people, nothing had happened, like, you know. They take ownership of the community, anything that needed to be done, they do. But along with that, they're using the resources that they have to best effect. So I paid a visit to some of the businesses located within the Eco Park. Billy Shar, it's lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you and welcome to Dunhill Eco Park. Thank you very much. Tell us about your business here. Uh, my business is um, we make and flavour butter. 
Um, so we started 18 months ago in the Eco Park here, upstairs in a small little unit, uh, which was uh, purposely uh, done for me, uh, which was a great asset to have. They put in all the requirements I needed and they brought it up to HSE standard. Um, and they worked with me in relation to everything I wanted. So it was a fantastic opportunity to get that uh, facility available. What does it mean to you to be part of this Dunhill Eco Park? Well, there's a great support here in relation to um, your rural, but the Eco Park and the credentials it has, and then the support that's there, and the community is just, um, you, you, you can't you can't really call that. Mm -hmm. To have that support there, they're, they're all interested in the product, they're all interested in tasting the product, sampling the product and buying the product, which is great, and they, they support all the businesses here. Next door to the Gourmet Butter Company is Kylie's Foods. We produce a fresh cook-in curry sauce, which is called Little Thai Kitchen. We've also just produced a new jam, a new chia jam. Uh, it's called Little Healthy Kitchen. What does it mean to you to be part of the Dunhill Eco Park? Dunhill Eco Park is a lovely community spirit. Um, there's lots of little small producer, food producers here, so we all share ideas and advice, and um, we're all there for to give a helping hand. It's just a real community spirit here within the, the park. I'll be back in the Eco Park later on to find out what other services they offer to the community. But for now, I've taken myself down the road to the Anne Valley Walk to find out how this project came about. Willie Moore, Mary, how are you? Welcome to the Anne Valley. Thank you very yes. much. It's bitter, bitter cold. It is cold. But Mary, it's it dry yes. and it looks gorgeous. So will we go for a bit we of a walk? We will. we will. Tell us what we have here. We have um, a walk that's two and a half kilometres mm -hmm. down to the castle. This was phase one of the walk. Um, opened in 2013. Uh -huh. um, big big footfall on it and it has stood the test of time. And how did it come about? Well, in another programme here, the lakes, as you're looking at here on the left, in around the end of the 90s, around 2000, the lakes were put in under another programme and it left uh, an area here just set up for a walk. Yeah. So we um, we got the, the idea then and to get the landowners to buy into it. And did they? They did and with, with, with everything Mary, the, the insurance was mm -hmm. the big thing with, with them and when we got that sorted out um, th that was really the problem over. So it was then down to, um, to get the funding yes. for it. With everybody coming on board, you obviously have a great community spirit here. Yes, um, we, are, we are lucky that we, we have, along with the landowners, when we were doing this, um, there was an awful lot of volunteers helped out mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. So we're really pushing an open door with it here. The walkway is maintained by a group of volunteers and Mary Finn is one of them. There's about 12 of us on the committee and in general everyone on the committee is a volunteer uh, and also other people who are not on the committee also volunteer to do the work. So the type of work Kate, that we do is that if we go for a walk and we see any litter we pick it up and in fairness people are very good as regards litter, they don't usually scatter litter everywhere. Um, also if the uh, path is in disrepair due to some bad weather, um, all the farmers on the valley come out and they help uh, repair okay, the, the, the surface. Uh, once a year the surface generally has to uh, be repaired as well uh, and they would come out and they would spread okay, the, um, the sand along the valley. So if somebody comes through the gate, like I did, and decides to go for a walk, what do they see as they walk along? Um, it's the 
flora and fauna here. At different times of the year, it is it is gorgeous. You will see young ducks. Uh, there's two or three lots of swans. So we will have cygnets there out in the summertime, and it's so good for the area, for the community. Um, like walking, it's so healthy, and it's the way we ha we ended up putting the walk. It is uh, wheelchair accessible. So I can see it's lovely, and you could push a buggy around that, no, no problem. Yeah, it, like this. The amount of people that are walking it here uh, every weekend, yeah. it, it is unbelievable. The wildlife display boards along the walkway were photographed by Nick McCarthy. So I've been coming here for a number of years, long before even the path was here, because uh, for wildlife it's just unique. I've done a lot of the, uh, the boards here, I've taken all the photographs for those. Uh, wildlife's my passion. I'm a forester and um, lecturer by trade, um, but I, I just love this as a hobby. For anybody who's interested in wildlife, to uh, amalgamate it, I suppose, a little bit with walking and then also watching wildlife. And over time, it's going to develop. At the moment, it's young, but a lot of the species are starting to come in. Like We already also have the little egret who comes in and fishes here. We have kingfishers, um, you know, you have otters. Um, now, it'll also bring in other animals as well, like mink and things like that, but that's important. And for kids, um, it gets them up close to wildlife, which is brilliant. The first phase one of it, which we're on now, it's 2.2 kilometres from here to the castle. That was easy when we came to phase two then, because the, it was so popular mm. that people uh, the landowners and, uh, and the second phase had no problem buying oh, into brilliant. it. So what's the second phase then? second phase then is exactly the same distance from Dunhill Castle down to Anstown, right out to the sea. And uh, that's, it's about 2.3 kilometres. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a good walk Anstel. for people, isn't it? It is, it? yeah. Like uh, from where you came in the gate, it's, uh, it's about 10k. Uh, there and back. There and back. Very yeah. good. And it, it's level and easy to walk. Willie, when you started off on this initiative with your landowners and with your volunteers, did you realise it was going to be so fab and so successful? Not in a wild stream, maybe. No? no, no, we didn't. Um, but the amount of uh, feedback we have got on it is unbelievable. Like, and it was open in 2013 that we haven't had any negatives on it at all. Really? The community here is certainly not resting on its laurels, so what's next? So that's phase one and phase two. Have you more plans for expansion? When we started we were doing this in three phases. So there is another mile going back, where you came in the gate, if you were to turn around there's a mile going back up the other mm -hmm. way. So hopefully um, we can get the landowners uh, on board there. A lot of work, time. isn't it? It is, but it's rewarding when you see how the way it turned out in the end. Yes, yeah. it's, it, it's good. A little birdie told me, though, that uh, your wife said if you get involved in phase three, there oh, could be right. divorce in your <laughs> house. <laughs> yeah, you might take her away with you when you're going back. <laughs> <laughs> Well now, as Willie goes off to buy a bunch of flowers to apologise to his wife so that he's left home this evening, we're going to take a break. But don't go away, because when we come back, we have lots more for you from this very progressive rural community in County Waterford. We'll talk to you again in a couple of minutes. So, Falter over Ashu, welcome back to Nationwide and to the village of Dunhill in County Waterford. Now, just on the edge of the village, there is a modern housing estate which has a very interesting story. Con, it's not every day that you come across a housing estate which was the initiative of the, the community. Tell us how it came about. Well, it came about, Mary, uh, the site was for sale commercially going back, and a number of us in the parish or in the local GA club said why couldn't we do something about developing um, a, a housing scheme that would benefit our community. Cause I'm gonna make this place your home. We bought it at the time for a half a million and one euro. We had no <laughs> money. But anyway, uh, it processed from there and uh, 
we appointed four trustees, including myself, to manage, to oversee the project. It wasn't easy, I can assure you. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of sleepless nights and uh, a lot of effort and time put into it. But at the end of the day, I think what we achieved is here to be seen today. Not alone do we create 40 houses in this beautiful site here, uh, we enhanced our community, our play school, yes. our, our local school, our church, our pub, our, G our GA club, our soccer club. Uh, and the so lovely thing is that everything is really within walking distance. Yeah, just the kids are walking down from the local school there this evening, all mm -hmm. safe and secure. Yeah. Um, the, the local GA club is, is up the fields there. The beach is only a couple of miles away. There was planning permission, outline planning for 60 houses, but we cut it back to 40. We thought the density was too high. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what we did enhanced the whole area. We have loads of green area for the kids to play in, very spacious, yeah. uh, good scenery, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because you're, if you like, the trustees, does that mean that there's a return for the, the community? Oh yeah, that was the whole concept behind it, Mary. Mm -hmm. The idea was that we could do this and uh, generate income for, for the community. Yeah. But the GA Club and the, the business park over, there was over 400,000 um, secured out, out of this development that went towards local projects. Well, Laura, you've moved out from Waterford City to live in Dunhill, so you must like it. I love it, yeah. I moved out here 14 years ago. I grew up in the city and since then I've had four children. Mm -hmm. So they all go to school here, they do all activities here, squash, hurling, mm -hmm. soccer. And I just love living by the sea and going for walks yeah. down the valley, it's yeah. gorgeous. What we found since we came here is there's a very sense of community spirit. Oh my God, I've never, I've never experienced anything like the community spirit in Dunhill, it's amazing. You know, when things go wrong, people are there for you, when things go good, they're there for you mm -hmm. as well. Like mm -hmm. it's, I love it. Now I'm back in the Eco Park to see what other services they offer the community. You don't need me to tell you that in rural communities education is so, so important and Dunhill is no exception. Here at the Eco Park in the village there's a multi-education centre and Marie Cox is the manager. Marie, I am really impressed. There is so much going on here. Tell us about some of the bits. The bits, there's many bits. Um, originally, we're funded under the Department of Rural and Community Development, administered by Pobble, to provide this community service in this rural community. So we provide quite a lot of, of different services to address rural isolation. So mm -hmm. included in that, you've seen our community cafe. We would also, all our meeting rooms that you've seen, we would host quite a lot of uh, community groups with their meetings. And education, of course, is the reason we're here in the first place, so there's quite a lot involved. What are the education opportunities available here? Our main um, opportunities, we work directly with Waterford Wexford ETB in providing a tourism trails with smart media programme. So this is in its seventh year now at this point and it's, uh, it's evolved over the years to the point where it's at the smart media element of it um, in conjunction with the tourism of business. So students learn to produce digital content. So we have drones and cameras and this is what the industry is looking for, is the, the, the people that go in and work for them can do this kind of thing. And we've had great success with our students. Mm -hmm. we've, people have gone and set up their own businesses. They're working as tour guides for the Viking Triangle, for the OPW. Um, they've gone on also to progress to further into education and it started here. One of the former participants in the course is Pauline Kennedy. I started the course in 2016, finished 2017 and uh, I really benefited from the course. I had uh, already an interest in local history so it really fitted in with kind of where I was coming from myself and some of the modules were really very interesting as regards the historical side of things so it was just really suitable for me and immediately when I finished the course I started work with the OPW in a fantastic site uh, called Ormond Castle down at Carrick on Shore. Um, so that was really great and then when I finished that the following year I started work in the Museum of Treasures in Waterford. So the course, as I said, it was in my locality and I was able to get work in the locality again which was just a great benefit to me.
We've come a bit down the road now to the Copper Coast Geopark Visitor Centre and the community here has quite literally put the area on the world stage. The Copper Coast is an area that stretches along the coast of County Waterford from Kilfarrisie Beach to Ballyvoil near Stradbally. Volcanoes, oceans, deserts and ice sheets all combined over 460 million years to create the rocks that form the landscape of this area. Robbie, it's an amazing story, that of the Copper Coast. Absolutely. Well, the Copper Coast is a story of a community working together over 20 years now, since 1997, when the Copper Coast Tourism Group formed, with the idea of creating a collaborative effort from the seven different villages in this area to make a unique community-based tourism project. The Copper Coast tells a story of about hundreds of millions of years of geological evolution and change in the earth, as well as a story of the community which lived here during the 19th century when this area was home to one of the largest copper mines in the British Empire. Imagine, gosh. Yeah. And now you and the community have uh, put this area on the world stage. After coming together in 1997 as the Copper Coast Tourism Group, the community here became one of the first European geoparks across Europe in 2001. And after having support from Waterford County Council and the Geological Survey of Ireland, the Copper Coast, along with the other European geoparks, became a UNESCO Global Geopark in 2015. I presume the UNESCO connection brings uh, a lot of tourists to the area. Being under the UNESCO patronage brings international recognition. It's one of the most recognised brands in the world mm -hmm. and it brings visitors from all over the world coming here to see the unique cultural and environmental heritage of the Copper Coast. And now you've got this gorgeous visitor centre to offer to tourists as well. Thanks very much Mary. It's a very beautiful building restored in 2011 from 19th century mining church mm -hmm. um, which was a complete ruin before the community decided to take it over and turn it with the help of leader European funding into this visitor centre which opens full time during the summer season. It really is amazing what can be achieved when a community comes together as one and works for the greater good. You couldn't but be impressed by what's been happening here in this part of County Waterford. A good example of the truth of the Shanukal is a Skahela a Warrenadina. Kogordakus Legachtena, a Taig Uber, a son on Holoder and So, Agasleshin, Tomwich Tagaha, a Gader on Shlor. Iwagwif, Agas Gadesh of Slan. On next Friday's Nationwide, getting back into the workforce after a few years' absence, we meet a group of women in the southeast who are availing of the help of the education and training boards. Did you know that soccer in this island is split into the FAI and the IFA? How did that happen? All the answers next Wednesday night on Division, the Irish soccer split at 9.35.